Hey, it's Justin Rondo, General Manager at Digital Marketer, and today I'm going to tell you about the four landing page factors that will make or break your page. Number one, the offer. The offer is without a doubt the most critical part of any landing page. It doesn't matter how pretty or ugly the page is, if you have a crappy offer, well, you're gonna have a bad time. The offer breaks down into four critical points, clarity, scent, relevance, and visualization. So even if you have an amazing offer, if you stink at articulating it on the page, it won't convert. So ask yourself whether what you're showing is desirable and you're clearly saying what it is and what's in it for your prospect. So scent or consistency is the next offer game changer. Make sure that the page offer and design is consistent with the referring source. You can do this by matching landing page copy, ad copy, similar visuals, similar videos, anything you can do to make sure that it's the same from start to finish. Next, we have targeting. If your offer isn't relevant to the audience, then you just paid premium for a click that isn't going to do a thing. Make sure your targeting is on point, you're consistent from the source, and you're crystal, crystal clear, and you'll see a conversion jump. Finally, visualization. You can't just rely on the text to sell. I know copy is king or whatever, but you need to be able to do this in different ways. You need to visualize the product, the features, and most importantly, the benefits in addition to using persuasive copy. Number two, the ask or your form or CTA on the page. Your ask needs to be evident wherever someone is. It doesn't matter if it's above the fold, below the fold, it needs to be evident and it needs to stand out. This is the whole, what do I do next step, right? There are a few things you have to do to make sure you get the most out of your form or your CTA. First, if you're using a lead gen form, make sure the length is consistent with the value of your offer. If it's an email newsletter, guess what? Ask for an email. If you're trying to get you know, a, a software demo or anything like that, you're probably gonna need to ask for more information to qualify the lead. Second, make sure the form or CTA is noticeable, visible, and this is the most important, reiterated. You don't want people scrolling down your site, finally kind of making the decision to, to work with you and then not knowing what to do next. And number three, trust. People don't like giving up information, personal or billing, to people they don't trust. So unless you're a well-known brand, you really don't have the authority to just say, hey, what's up, give me your information, or hey, give me your billing information. You need to build up some rapport. An easy way to do this is to have a professionally designed page. Now I know, I know, I know, what's beautiful doesn't always convert, but it actually does help make sure people know that you're not some dude in a basement just trying to scam them. So depending on the level of your ask, you want to have relevant trust icons. You don't want to be asking for someone's information and put something that's like McAfee secure. That's going to make them think they're going to be putting billing information in. So if you're asking for that type of personal information, use a privacy policy. If you're asking for billing information, use icons that people would actually expect to see then, right? So now you need to move to one of the best ways to get people to trust you is to show that people have used your product and loved it. The best way to do this is with authentic customer testimonials, ratings, or reviews. Don't have stellar testimonials because you might be new. Or if you're in the B2B space, just share some logos with clients that have worked with you as long as they said they're okay with it. And number four, the visual hierarchy. I briefly talked about design in the trust section and about some design elements in the form and CTA section, but visual hierarchy is different because it's really about two things, message sequencing and visual cues. Elements on a page are meant to articulate a message. Copy tells the what, images can show the what and the why, and so on. However, you can't just plop them on a page with no plan for how you want these messages to be consumed. Visual hierarchy takes care of all of that. In general, you wanna address the what, the why, and the what's next, or the ask, using several different types of form elements throughout the page. So you don't wanna just use copy to do this, you wanna use images to do this as well. Once you know how you want to articulate it, you need to choose when, right? So there's two things you have to be thinking of there. You can use visual cues to highlight key pieces of information. Like when you take the most important content and have it in a light background so the eye is drawn to it. From there, you just need to make sure the page fits a singular theme. And most importantly, 
it has to, has to render well on all devices. If you're only building for mobile or you're only building for desktop, you're going to alienate your visitors. Don't just rely on responsive page themes either. Those solve a rendering problem, but do nothing to solve a sequencing problem. So to recap, if you want a high converting landing page, you're going to want to optimize your offer, what it is and how you articulate it, your ask, your trust factors, and your sequencing and page design. Now, if you want to dive deeper, I have a free gift for you to help you score your landing page that's available to all Digital Marketer Insiders. If you're interested, there's a link in the description, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Oh, and let me know which element you think drives most conversions in the comments.